hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is emily if you've been here before thank you very much for coming back and if this is your first time you're welcome in today's video i'll be talking about how to register with the hcpc as a biomedical scientist so what is hcpc hcpc is the health and care professions council which regulates health and care professionals in the uk these health and care professions have designated titles that are protected by law and for individuals to use these professional titles, they must be registered with the HCPC. This is the list of the health and care professions that are regulated by the HCPC and their protected title of which biomedical scientist is one. So for anyone to use this title of biomedical scientist, they need to be registered with the HCPC. Anyone that is not on the HCPC register and is using this designated title may be breaking the law and could be prosecuted. HCPC regulates these health and care professions by setting standards for professionals' education and training, by approving programs which professionals must complete to register, by keeping a register of professionals which have met their standard and also by taking any action against any professionals on the register that doesn't meet the HCPC standards. So the main aim of the HCPC is actually to protect the public and ensure that every individual providing care is competent enough to provide a high level of care. That is just a brief introduction into HCPC, so I'm just going to move on now to the main topic, which is how to register with the HCPC as a biomedical scientist. So to register with the HCPC, there's some standards you would be required to meet. The first is the standard of conduct, performance and ethics, which is required for all registrants. The standard of proficiency, which is specific to individual professions. Standard of continuing professional development for all registrants and education and training. So before you start applying to the HCPC, I will encourage you to read through these standards and see how you can meet them. There are two different application routes to apply to the HCPC. The first one is if you completed your training in the UK and the second one is if you completed your training outside the UK. Today's video is going to be based on the international application for those who have completed their training outside the United Kingdom. To start your HCPC registration, you go to the HCPC website, which is hcpc-uk.org and you choose the registration option. Getting on the register, then international application. Here you can see information on how to apply international application forms to be filled application if you are from Switzerland and also other information about background check and English language proficiency. The international application forms should be downloaded and filled and sent to the address on the front page of the form which is the registration department for HCPC. There are three documents for international application. The first is the application form which needs to be completed. The second is the guidance which has information with which you can complete the application form. And the last is the HCPC course information form which needs to be filled with information of all the courses you studied for. Before you start filling the application form, make sure you go through the guidance for international applicants so that you can have a full understanding of how to fill this form. The guidance has information on how to complete the form and also about the details you need to include, your qualification in relevant professions, your professional experience, the professional registration and membership that you've got, the English language proficiency that is required, how to pay your scrutiny fee, 
the different registration cycle for individual professions because there are different uh, time to register for different professions. For biomedical scientists, the registration cycle is from the 1st of December to 30th of November. It also includes the declaration that you need to make and just all the information about how to register and get on the HCPC register. Now I'm going to proceed to how to complete the application form. This is the application form for international applicants. You can either complete this form electronically using a computer or you can print it out and complete it by hand. If you are completing this form electronically, you would still need to print out the form and sign section 6 and 7 which is at the end with an handwritten signature, then you can post it to the address on the first page. And if you decide to print out the form and complete by hand, make sure that you complete the form using black ink and block letters which are capital letters and also make sure that you mark all the boxes with a cross, not a tick, with a cross. Then you sign section 6 and 7 also and post it to the HCPC address. I will now go through how to fill each section of the form. The first point is asking if you've applied for the HCPC registration before and if you have, you choose yes and give your application number and if you haven't, you choose no. And to register as a biomedical scientist, you choose part 5. Now we move to section 1 which is your details. Your title, if you're Mr, Mrs, Miss or any other title, you can specify. Your first name and your last name. It is advisable to use the names on your evidence for identity so that both names correlate. If you have uh, previous names, maybe you're married, now you've got a different son name, you can include that under the previous names. Also, you will need to attach a current passport style photograph to the first page of the application form. This passport should be in the dimension specified and also it should be glued to the form after it's been printed and not to be stapled to the form. Your nationality and if you've got more than one nationality, you can add other nationalities. Your date of birth in the date, month and year format. Your town and country of birth and your gender, male or female, your national insurance number. If you don't have this number, you can leave it blank. Usually you get that number when you start working in the UK. Next, you provide details of your current address. This home address is the address to which all your correspondence will be sent. So it is important that you give the accurate information. You'll be required to provide a certified proof of your identity and your current address. So it is important that both details on your form and on these evidences are the same. If you make your application in a name that is different from your identity document or qualification, you will need to provide certified copies of documents that explain why these details are different, such as a marriage certificate. These documents need to be certified by a lawyer or a judicial or consular officer or a person of standing in the community and they need to endorse the copy of your original document with this statement as certified that this is a true copy of the original document seen by me. They also need to date and sign these documents and include their name, their profession and contact details. If any of these documents are not in English language, they need to be translated to English and this translated version also needs to be certified as a true copy of the original document. Do not send the originals of your document. You only need to send a copy of the document that has been certified by someone of good standing in the community. The documents that need to be provided to verify your identity should be a certified copy of your current passport or a national identification card. And any of these documents can be used to prove your address as far as it has your full name. You can use your household utility bill for electricity, gas and water or a fixed telephone line. This utility bill needs to be within six months. And telephone bills from mobiles outside the UK are not acceptable except it is fixed. 
You can use your full driving license if it's been issued in the UK, EEA state or Switzerland. You can use a bank building society credit card or mortgage statement. Also, it needs to be within six months. PDF and online statements will not be acceptable. It needs to be a statement that's been posted to your home address. You can also use your council tax statement for the current year or a document from HM Revenue and Custom such as tax assessment not more than six months old. P45 and P60 are not acceptable. Now going back to the form, you will need to provide a telephone or mobile number that includes the international dialing code for your country and also a current email address. This will be used to communicate with you throughout your application process. This concludes section 1 of the application form. Now I will move to section 2 which is about qualifications in relevant profession which is biomedical sciences. This qualification can either be a degree, diploma or any qualification that can enable you to practice as a biomedical scientist. First is to state the name of the qualification in its original language. So if it's in Mandarin or Arabic, you would have to write the title of your qualification in that section. Then you move to the name of the qualification in English, the start date for your qualification and the date on which your qualification was awarded. Have you provided the course information form? Yes or no? This is another form in the international application forms. It is available as a Word document which you will need to download and send to your university or training institution as an email attachment. It needs to be filled with all this information and also must have the stamp or the seal of the university or the training institution with the contact details of a course administrator or a member of staff who can be contacted as part of the verification process of your application. You need to provide enough information on the theoretical and practical content of your course which you've completed so that the HCPC can compare this to their standard of proficiency. Similar to how a UK degree will be evaluated to make sure that it's IBMS accredited, which then allows registration with the HCPC. Now back to the main application form. Give the name and address of your educational institution where you completed this course. Provide the official contact detail for the course administrator. This might be the head of department or someone that HCPC can contact to confirm you were at the educational institution and you actually studied for this course. And if you have additional qualification that you would like to be considered for your HCPC application, you can also include them. You can include up to two more additional qualification. But do not include short courses like day courses in this section. And also remember you need to provide certified copies of this qualification. And if they are not in English, you need to provide a translated version which has been certified. A course information form also needs to be filled for each of these qualifications. As I have explained earlier, it needs to be completed by the awarding institution with the stamp and the seal. And also it needs to detail every content of the module and the subject that you've studied. As well as any practical experience that was gained during this course. Now we'll move to section 3 which is about your professional experience. This section is where you detail your professional experience either as part of your work currently as a biomedical scientist or as part of your university degree. If you had to go on any placement or internship, you would have to include the details here. You give the name of the employer or the organization where you gained your professional experience, the address of this employer, a telephone number including the international dialing code, an email address of your supervisor or manager at this organization. This email or this address of your supervisor must be their professional or their business address. A personal email or a private email would not be accepted. Also, make sure that you have their current details, the current address and the current email because they would be sent an email to check if you actually gain this professional experience at this organization. And if you don't have a current email, they would not receive this information. Next, you add the name of your 
supervisor or your manager who will be contacted to verify the information you've provided, the start dates and, and the end dates of your placements. And if you're currently still there, you would cross the present day option. How many hours you work per week to gain this professional experience, the position you held in the original language and also the position you held in English language. Also, if you're registered with a regulatory or a professional body while you're at this post, you should indicate if you did yes or no if you were not registered with any professional body. Here you will be required to provide more details of this post and also to take into account any key competency that you gained or you have to practice your profession as a biomedical scientist. So you have to describe your work setting and provide a summary of the range of service users that you dealt with and also to give some information about the type of assessment, the treatment and the evaluation method that you used. So if you worked in an histology lab, you could say that you worked in an histology lab to carry out histopathological investigations and you work with patients from like dermatology, from the GI clinic, from cancer wards, andrology, and you carried out things like special stains, frozen section, embedding of tissue, immunohistochemistry, most surgery, electron microscopy, cytology andrology these are some of the things you could mention to show that you've actually gained a broad range of professional experience you have this section to provide all this information about your professional experience and you also encourage to provide additional information from your employer to supplement your own information which you've provided here you have two of these forms to provide your professional experience so you should provide as much detail as possible to help the HCPC to determine if you meet their standard of proficiency. The information you provide must be in chronological order that means you have to state the most recent experience first and also if there's any gap in your career maybe you took time off work to study you need to state why there's a gap in your career history. If you have a lot of professional experiences, you won't have enough space on this form to stick them all so you can continue on any additional sheet of paper if need be. Now I'll move to section 4 which is about professional registration and memberships. In this section, you will give details of any registration or membership of any regulatory body or professional association that you are a part of. It should be listed in chronological order and you would state the name of the organization in the original language, the name of the organization in English, your registration number, the date from which you were registered until the date which the registration elapsed. But if you're still registered, you can choose the present day registration, then the email of the registration body the website of the registration body and also a telephone number that includes the international dialing code for the country. If you're currently working in a country that doesn't have a regulatory body for your profession, you can leave this space blank. But if you've ever worked in a country where you had to be a part of a regulatory body or a member of a regulatory body, you have to give all the details of the regulatory body in this part of the form and you can include the details of four professional bodies in this form now i will move to section five which is the english language proficiency section to meet the standard of proficiency for registration with the hcpc every registrant must be able to communicate effectively in english as they will be working with various patients, clients, users, carers and other professionals and the medium of communication is English language. So they need to be able to interact with people and communicate effectively. If you are a citizen of a relevant European state, you will be exempted from providing a proof of English language proficiency. You must declare if English is your first language or not and you should only indicate English as your first language if it is the main and only language that you use to communicate on a daily basis. 
Having studied English or undertaken education or training in an institution where the medium of instruction is English does not necessarily mean that English is your first language. So if English is not your first language, you are required to provide a proof of your English language proficiency. Applicants whose first language is not English and who are required to provide a language test certificate as evidence of their proficiency must ensure that it is comparable to the International English Language Testing System, i.e. LTS, and at a level 7.0 with no element below 6.5. The two main tests that are acceptable for registration with the HCPC are International English Language Testing System, which is the IELTS, and the Test of English as a Foreign Language, TOEFL. If you are using the IELTS, you need to score at a level of 7.0 with no element below 6.5. And if you're using the TOEFL test, you need to score a minimum of 100 out of the 120. Any test certificate that is submitted must not be more than two years old when the application is submitted to the HCPC. But if you start your test of English as a foreign language TOEFL test in the UK, the test will not be acceptable. The test needs to be taken outside of the UK for it to be acceptable. If you propose to rely upon a non-IE LTS test score that is not listed below, it will be your responsibility to provide evidence that it is comparable to the requisite IE LTS level. Failure to do so will delay the processing of your application. Now move to section 6 which is paying your scrutiny fee. When you send your application to the ATPC for processing, you will receive an email with a link to the World Pay Payment Service. So it is a requirement that you provide an email address that this information can be sent so that you can be notified when payment is required. The scrutiny fee is a one-off non-refundable payment of £495. And you would have to follow the link in the email that you've been sent to make the payment for this amount. This link will be active for 72 hours, so you need to access this on time. If you do not access this link on time or make payments within the 72 hours time frame, you will need to call the HCPC again and make a debit or credit card payment. And this might delay your application process because your application cannot be processed without the payment of this scrutiny fee. So this is why it's important for you to have a current or a valid email address so that you can get it as quickly as possible and you have a period of 72 hours which is 3 days to make this payment. If you require the payment to be made by a third party, maybe your parent or a guarantor, you will need to forward this email containing the payment link to them. And once they have this email, they will be able to access the link and complete the payment on your behalf. But you will still have to make these payments within the 72 hours period. If your application is successful, you will receive a second World Pay payment link to the same email which will require you to make payment for the registration fee. And the amount you pay will be dependent on when you actually come on the register. The registration for biomedical scientists is biannual, so it means every two years. So you have your registration that covers you for two professional years. So if you apply to join the register in the middle of the professional year, the amount of registration fee that you'll be required to pay will be different from the amount that will be required for someone that joined at the start of the professional year. This is something you'll be advised of when your application has been processed and approved. It is nothing that you should be worried about at this stage. It will come up after your application has been successful. I just thought I'd mention it here while we are talking about the fees. As of the time of recording this video, which is May 2021, the cost of the scrutiny fee is 495 and the cost for registration is £90 for a year, so that means it's £180 for two years.
but from the 1st of July 2021, the scrutiny fee will increase from £495 to £539.65. While the registration fee would increase from £90 for a year to £98.12 for a year, making that an increase from £180 for two years to £196.24 for two years registration. The changes to this fee is still under proposal, but if it is approved, it will take effect from the 1st of July 2021. Just in case you're making your application after this date, it's something to bear in mind. Now to the last section of the application form, which is the declaration. Please read, complete and sign the declarations below. The first is I declare that I have read, understood, how we comply with the HCPC standard of conduct, performance and ethics. These are the standards against which your application will be examined, so it is important that you've read these standards. I understand that I must have in place a professional indemnity agreement which provides appropriate cover and I confirm that I will have this in place when I practice. This is the sort of insurance that you need to have in place by the time you start working. I agree to pay the fees for my registration. This is after your application has been approved, you agree to pay the registration fee. I consent to the HCPC contacting any person to obtain further information about my application or to verify the information that I have provided and agree that any person who is so contacted may provide the HCPC with an information about me, which the person holds. So this is just to consenting to the HCPC obtaining information about you from another party and also giving the other party the authority to release this information to the HCPC. And lastly, I confirm that the information I have provided in this application is correct and understand that fraudulently procuring an entry in the HCPC register is a criminal offence under the Article 39 of the Health Professions Order 2001. That is just to say that every information that you've given in this application is the right and is the correct information. Now to the Character and Health Vetting and Barring section. Please read the accompanying guidance notes carefully before completing this section. If your answer to any of the questions below is yes, please indicate by placing a cross in the appropriate box and give details on a separate sheet. So reading from the guidance notes, it says when we look at whether an applicant is of good character, we take account of conduct in the past, which indicates that the applicant may be dishonest untrustworthy, capable of harming service users, or to act in a manner which undermines public confidence in the perfection in question. The Rehabilitation of Offenders Act 1974 does not apply to an application of HCPC registration, so you must declare to us any conviction or police cautions that you have received, even if they are spent under that act other than a protected caution or protected conviction. A caution is protected from disclosure six years after it was accepted or two years if the offender was under 18 when it was accepted. A conviction is protected from disclosure after 11 years or five and a half years if the offender was under 18 when convicted. In either case, a conviction will only be protected if the offender received a non-custodial sentence and has no other conviction. A caution or conviction will not be protected if it is for a listed offense under the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act 1974, exception order 1975. This includes serious violence or sexual offenses and offenses of specific relevance to the safeguarding of children and vulnerable adults. A caution or conviction for a listed offense must always be disclosed to us. So for further guidance on listed offenses may be found on the Disclosure and Barring Service website, 
which is stated below. You need to read and understand what this part of the application is all about because you need to fill it correctly. If any part of this character check is filled incorrectly or is filled falsely, this can impact your application to the ATPC or may even debar you from joining the register. So make sure that you fill this correctly and indicate by placing a cross at the appropriate box and give further details on a separate sheet. So have you been convicted for a criminal offense or received a police caution other than a protected caution or a protected conviction? Have you been disciplined by a professional or regulatory body or your employer? Have you had civil proceedings brought or any other claim made against you, your employer, or any indemnity insurer arising from the practice of your profession? Do you have any physical or mental health condition that would impair your fitness to practice your profession? So this is just asking whether you have any health condition that would affect your fitness to practice. It's not asking whether the applicant is LD as many health conditions can be managed properly. So the applicant is still able to practice their profession safely and effectively. HCPC recognized that a disability may not be seen as an health condition, but they need to have this information about any disability that might affect your fitness to practice. And lastly, are you or have you ever been bad under the Safeguarding Vulnerable Groups Act 2006 or the Protection of Vulnerable Groups Scotland Act 2007 from working with children or from working with vulnerable adults? A background check is going to be carried out on all the information that you've provided in your application. This may be undertaken by the ACPC, its agent or their representative. The information you provide may be disclosed to government agencies and other third parties such as your employers, referees and professional bodies. This information may be used outside of the EEA if appropriate. So you need to make sure that every information that you've provided in this application is correct and is accurate so that you can pass the background check. So now that you've completed the application form, you can now print it out, then sign and date the application form and write your name in block letters. So at the end of the application form, there's a checklist which serves as a guidance to the application and also as a reference to all the uh, supporting document that you need to submit with the application. So it's to check that you've read and understood the standard of proficiency that is relevant to your profession as a biomedical scientist that you've read and understood the standard of conduct, performance and ethics that is applicable to all registrants, that you've read the guidance notes to the application form, that you've included the scrutiny fee payments email address, that you have a copy of your ID and is certified, that you have a copy of your proof address and is certified, that you have provided a certified proof of any name change if applicable, such as a marriage certificate, that you have a passport photo that is attached, that you have included a certified copy of your relevant qualification certificate and an official transcript where applicable, that you have provided the original and the certified translation of the course information form, that you have provided at least one completed form relating to your professional experience with contact details for your supervisor while studying or since graduating. So on a final note it says please do not staple any part of this application. So that means you should not staple the passport photograph to this application form and also you should not staple any part of this form together. That means individual pages of this application form should not be stapled together. Secondly, please do not send part of this application in a separate plastic wallet or covers. This means that you need to keep all your applications together. So the application and the certified copies of your evidences need to be together. Do not put one or the other in a separate plastic cover. Just put everything together in a single envelope. 
And lastly, for confirmation of save received, it is advisable to send the application by registered mail so you will be able to track it. So that means you should not send your application as a standard mail. You need to send it as a sign for so that when it is received by the HCPC, you can be notified. So once you send your completed application to the HCPC, they would start processing your application within five days of receiving it. You should also receive a letter confirming that your application has been received and also that your scrutiny fee has also been received. Your application would undertake an initial processing, which would take about four weeks. Your relevant training and qualification will be assessed to see if he meets the standard of proficiency required to practice as a biomedical scientist in the UK. And also they would verify all the information you've provided in your application to make sure it is correct and accurate. And a background check will be carried out for any criminal conventions. So if your application is complete and HCPC does not require any further information from you, it will take about 60 working days from the time that HCPC acknowledged that they've received your application to the time that you would get your name on the register. This 60 working days is about 12 weeks, which is roughly 3 months. Once your application has been assessed by the HCPC and it is found to be successful, you would have to pay registration fee. This registration fee will put your name on the register and give you a registration number. And also you will receive a registration letter saying that you are now registered with the HCPC and can fully practice as a biomedical scientist. In order to remain on the HCPC register, you need to renew your registration every two years. This will require you to pay your registration renewal fee for the two years that you'll be registered. Then you renew your registration online and also you could be asked to submit a CPD audit and you should be able to submit this when called upon. You should receive information about renewing your registration around three months before the end of the registration cycle. So that's around three months before the 30th of November. It is usually in the form of a letter sent to your home address. So it's quite important that you have the correct details with the HCPC. So that concludes the process of making an international application to the HCPC to be registered as a biomedical scientist. Thank you very much for listening to me and for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful if you are a biomedical scientist looking to work in the UK and you are trying to apply to the HCPC. If you would like any other clarification or if you have any other question about registering with the HCPC, kindly leave your questions in the comment section and I will try and answer them to the best of my knowledge. I have other videos in my biomedical science series where I covered some topics in relation to biomedical sciences. So if you've not had a look at these videos, kindly check them out. And also please, if you've not subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe, share and like my video, leave your comments and also turn on your notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thank you very much once again for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye for now.